Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and we're back on the 2010 Jeep Patriot, where I'm having trouble in this cold snap that we're having, which where the temperature is about minus 16 to minus 20 uh, Celsius. The, uh, even when it's plugged into the block heater, which we have to do up in the north here, no it's not an electric car, we have to plug in a block heater to uh, keep the engine warm in this cold weather. Even with it plugged in, uh, the engine doesn't turn over very quickly and it sounds very labored. The battery in the Jeep is uh, about five years old and that's around the life of a battery these days. So we're going to go through the process of changing it out. So let's get at it. Okay, so the battery I've chosen to replace uh, on this car is a uh, Kirkland battery out of Costco. And this matches the one that's in here now because I did buy the last one from Costco as well. It is an 86 FT. You can see this battery has a manufacturer code of 10th month, 21st year. So it's relatively new. This is being December. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my charger just to get it up to a full charge, just because it's been on the shelf for a couple months. But you don't need necessarily need to do this. The batteries do come fully charged. But I'm just going to do that just to get it up to 100%. I'm just going to remove these post protectors. Just remember, red positive, black negative, and there's a plus and a minus right on the battery, so should be no problem uh, with getting those mixed up. You shouldn't uh, ever put positive on negative, negative on positive, or else uh, you'll be having a bad day. Okay, so we get the battery charger all hooked up there, and as you can see, the green light on my charger is blinking, so the battery is fully charged. Um, I had it charged for about a half an hour before it was at full charge. So basically, uh, the, like I said, the battery does come charged from the factory. Uh, if you don't uh, bring the battery up to 100%, probably a good idea that once you put the battery in to run your vehicle for a uh, half hour, 45 minutes, just to get that battery fully charged. Now that we got that one uh, ready to go, let's pull out the old one. So on the Jeep Patriot, the battery is under the hood in the engine compartment. Some vehicles, um, you might find the battery under the front passenger seat. It could be in the trunk, but in our case, it's right here under the hood and, and handy to get at. So the first thing we're going to do is turn these knobs on this uh, air intake cover, and it also covers the battery, and we're going to pull that off. And there's our old battery. As you can see on the sticker on this one, it was manufactured in ninth month uh, 2016. So it is definitely uh, a five year old battery and in the case of this Kirkland battery, it pretty much lasted five years. Now, the battery isn't dead, it hasn't left me stranded yet, but it's just kind of as a preventive maintenance thing, I'm going to change the battery out just knowing that the uh, cold cranking is not as uh, efficient as it should be. Okay, so these battery posts have a, a 10 millimeter nut on them that you need to loosen off. Remember, lefty loosey, tidy righty. So we'll loosen that off on the negative. I always take the negative off first. Um, it's just kind of a practice that I'm used to because um, any sparks and stuff could ignite any um, off gassing that's around with the batteries. but. Um, just on the safe side, always take the negative off first. Okay, there's the negative. We're going to give those posts a bit of a cleaning too once uh, we put the new battery in. So let's get that post out of the way. Let's do the positive next. And while you're at it, just kind of double check your, your cables, make sure they're still in good shape and replace them as required this positive looks good and um, there's also a positive probably heading down to the starter there this one's heading to the uh, the fuse box here and then on the negative side it looks uh, you know fairly good i don't see any problems with them even though they're 11 years old and original they still look like they're in pretty good shape okay so let's get this positive cable off and out of our way Okay, next thing we're going to do is down here is the battery uh, hold down clamp. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not. 
but it is a one half inch uh, bolt that is holding the uh, clamp down in there. I haven't got enough light to get in there, so but it is you can sort of see it there. So we're just going to get a extended socket and a extension on my ratchet. We'll pull that off of there. My extension isn't quite long enough. I'm going to get another long one on there. Give myself a bit more clearance in there. In true mundane man fashion, I dropped the uh, bolt down there, so hopefully I'll be able to fish it out easy enough once uh, I get the old battery out. Okay, let's see if we can keep this positive cable out of the way. And I'm going to lift the old battery out of there. Little bit of tight quarters in there, but not too bad. We look down there in the tray. Looks kind of corroded in there. Some of the moisture must just get caught under there. I'm just going to give that a quick vacuum out, and uh, we'll put the new battery in there. This is what 15 minutes of looking for that uh, battery bracket hold down bolt. If you can try, do not drop that sucker. What a pain in the butt, because it, it fell into this drip tray here, or protection tray. So, you would do your best to try and hold on to that thing. It looks like somewhere along the way I hit something in the road too, because this is all busted up. I don't remember doing that. Road hazards, I guess. I had to take out the uh, three number 10 uh, bolts that hold this uh, plastic cover on. So, give me a few minutes to put this back together and we'll get back on the uh, battery install. On second thought, I'm going to leave those three uh, bolts out just in case I drop this sucker again. But you can see how uh, how much rust is built up on that because it's out in the elements there. So I'm going to clean up the threads and then I'll spray some some goop down that hole and then I'm just going to spray the tops of these bolts with some rust inhibitor just to, if I ever need to get that battery uh, tray out of there I want to make sure it's not going to be too much of a fight. I started digging in here and discovered I had like five years worth of sand and crap in there so I'm just going to clean that all out. Um, I'm wondering if these got rusty because uh, there's a drain or something that's plugged that's not letting uh, water out but regardless let's just get all the crap out while we're here. Now if you have a dead battery and you're at the side of the road I'm sure you're not going to want to spend this kind of time but um, we'll just uh, get some of that grunge out there and if you have to put a battery in when that's all grunged up, just maybe take it out a little later when you've got more time and it's a little bit warmer to uh, clean that tray out. We have a bunch of green pussy corrosion stuff on the battery terminals. You can use a solution of baking soda and water and you can soak the posts in that or the, the battery clamps. I would be careful of not doing it near the battery though. You don't want to get baking soda in the battery. That'll neutralize the acid in it somewhat and then you won't be very happy with yourself. That should take care of that. I think I'm due for a new terminal cleaner. Now with the battery hold down bracket I am going to put it in and leave it loose and then we should be able to wiggle the battery underneath it. And that might have been my mistake before by taking it completely out is um, why I dropped the uh, bolt down. Um, if I just loosened it and let the uh, battery hold down bracket slide up and down, um, I probably would have been able to get the battery out without dropping this into the, the protective tray below. So just make sure you have it right way up. And the way I can tell it's right way up is the dirt that's sitting in the top of it would have fallen down from the top. So we'll thread that in. A little ways. I 
and you can see how it has slide capability. So if you just keep that back like that, out of the way of putting the battery in, we should be able to drop the battery in no problem. We'll have to try and keep our uh, battery cables out of the way too. Okay, let's put the battery in. We're going to keep the uh, negative on the left, positive on the right, and it's pretty obvious where your battery terminals are, or sorry, your battery cables are. The biggest challenge is keeping your cables out of your way. So I was able to tuck the negative in behind, drop it straight in the tray, positive cable out of the way, and then boom, it's in. And I was able to uh, keep that bracket out of the way so that it did not uh, have to take the bolt right out and so that I'm able to tie down the battery nicely. When you get close to the bottom, just make sure your bracket is pushed up against the battery and the battery is sitting in the tray tight. Careful you don't touch your ratchet to both of the terminals. If you were smart, you might have put some anti-seize on the threads of that uh, bolt, or nut, nut and bolt, whatever, and uh, you know, in my case, the Jeep is 11, 12 years old, so uh, I don't know. Am I going to change a battery in it again? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm going to use my post cleaner, clean up those posts, make sure that there's no residue on them from the factory. Gives them a nice contact surface for the uh, battery cables. I'll do the positive next. Okay, both posts are clean. Let's just wipe off uh, some of that post material. Want the battery to look nice and clean. Okay, we've cleaned up the posts and wiped away any of that uh, post material. Now I like to put a little bit of uh, lithium grease on the posts just to keep the corrosion away and uh, it helps provide a good uh, bonding surface between the battery cable and the battery. Some people use like a dielectric uh, grease or something like that, but I find the uh, white lithium grease works just as well. Just going to put a little on each post and some inside the cable. Now this method, I've never had an issue with uh, corrosion on the battery terminals, so um, I guess it's my proven method of doing it. On all the years that I've changed batteries, I've never had an issue using some lithium grease on the posts. Well folks, I like to go the extra mile for you and do things twice because, you know, sometimes uh, you have a lapse of intelligence, but I forgot to put this battery insulator around the battery that came from the factory. You can choose to do a uh, battery insulator delete, but up here in Canada where it gets really cold, especially out in the prairies here, any help you can uh, give your battery the better, and it also protects the case. So I'm going to put that on. It just goes around the battery like such. Easy peasy, supposedly. So I should have no trouble getting this battery back in because I've already done it once. There we go. Okay, I'll drop the battery back in and we'll carry on with uh, connecting the cables up. Okay, let's get the uh, cables back on the battery. I like to do the positive first, just so that we don't ground anything out while we're connecting everything. You just want to be careful you don't really reef on those uh, bolts. Uh, but you don't want to break the post off inside of the battery. Okay, that's a positive. Let's put the negative on now. Make sure that's completely on and firmly in place. I can see my negative 
the uh, clamp on the post is, or sorry, the clamp on the cable is closed completely. Um, so just make sure that if the, the two surfaces match up that uh, you don't end up with a loose ground connection. Uh, mine is kind of, the metal is tucked into the underside of one piece is folded into the other one. So I do get a nice strong connection there, but you always want to make sure you got a good tight connection on your battery and uh, will save you any grief down in the future. So again this is a Kirkland battery, the 96FT, 650 cold cranking amps at minus 17 Celsius. Um, I'm not sure what that is Fahrenheit, is that like zero Fahrenheit? Not sure. And 810 uh, cranking amps at uh, zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that one I do know. It is a Kirkland battery, four year warranty. I'm sure it's a prorated warranty so that if you uh, say the battery quits on you in year four, you may only get like 25% of your money towards a new battery. Um, my old battery was a Kirkland as well, had the similar warranty, but it was still functioning so I couldn't say that the battery didn't uh, meet expectations and plus it was uh, slightly over five years old which means it's due for replacement anyways. Okay just for fun before we put the uh, battery cover back on let's start it up make sure it does start. I, I'm sure it will because the battery did charge up just fine so let's fire it up and see how it sounds. Now of course the garage is warm and the battery is warm so we're not going to see any uh, difference in cranking I'm sure. But just for fun, let's uh, fire it up. No problem there. It did reset my clock though. I know in my Ram 1500 you don't lose uh, the settings on your radio. And um, let's see if the preset stayed in place, but the uh, the clock. Uh, went out on the on the radio, which is fine. That's easy enough to set. And the uh, always the uh, TPMS sensor uh, or uh, air pressure light is always on in the winter here. I always have trouble with these uh, aluminum wheels and losing a bit of air when the temperature drops. Okay, the battery cover and air intake just slides into that slot down below. Just wiggle it in. And you come back to these uh, tabs or, or turn locks and just turn them clockwise. And that is back in place. Uh, one thing I should note, this is the 2.4 liter. Process is going to be the same on the, uh, what, is, what is the 2.0 liter I think is the other uh, motor that might be in uh, your Jeep Patriot. So um, just double check that maybe uh, there might be a different battery type for one with the 2.0 liter in it, but uh, overall process is gonna be the same. Just for fun, I'm gonna put my battery tester on this old battery and see what it says. This is basically a heater element that takes, puts a draw on the uh, battery. And it says to connect a battery, hold on load for 10 seconds and read meter so it is showing over 12 volts which is normal voltage for a battery so let's fire up the tester and see what it says it is showing in the weak zone and i better be careful because this thing gets hot it's just like a heater element so it's right in the middle of the weak zone heading towards bad so it was definitely time to replace this battery I don't know if you can see in the camera that element gets red hot. And after doing that, uh, it's probably more than 10 seconds on the test, but it's now below, just below the 12 volt mark. So this battery was on its way out. So that's my process for changing a battery in a, this one is a 2010 Jeep Patriot, but the process would pretty much be the same from 2007 up to 2017 or whenever the last model line was for this. It didn't change them very much. And if you uh, have any methods or uh, tips that you want to, make sure you just put them down in the comments there. That would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all those good things. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.